Welcome back to Sister Sarah Live. Now, we all know our sister Rashawn loves football. She recently sat down with one of the most talented quarterbacks in the NFL the game has ever seen, Michael Vick. That's true. I am here with a man that needs no introduction, the one and only, the extraordinary Michael Vick. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. It's an honor to be sitting here in your presence. Right now. It's been a long time. It's been a long time since really the back the old time. radio days Absolutely. and all that. But everything is 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 good, and, I'm, and it's good to see you, especially in this capacity. Let's talk a little bit about this league, the Alliance of American Football. You're going to yeah. be the offensive coordinator for the Atlanta team. Yeah. Okay. So talk about how you got involved in this. You know what? It's a long story, but I'm going to sum it up. I got a phone call from J.K. McKay who is Rich McKay's brother, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, he threw it out there as far as the league starting up, and I'm thinking, like, I don't know if this league is going to be real. Right. Is it serious? You know, let's talk more about it. And then, I, you know, we hung up the phone, and I was like, this is not going to come to fruition. Right. And he called me back, like, a week later, and was like, look, we want to do a press conference in Atlanta. I'm like, really? <laughs> and uh, from that point on, it was, it was all real. And now, yeah. you know, we're here. I got signed as the offensive coordinator. We're doing the combine. I'm yeah. out there evaluating talent. And it's funny because, you know, I started doing Fox last year, mm -hmm. and that was it was awesome. And I'm like, okay, I can make a career out of this because I grew into it. Yeah. But I was still missing the coaching piece. Mm -hmm. like I did an internship in Kansas City, and I really want to be able to give back to the kids and teach the game of football because right. I learned so much over the years. Right. And, this opportunity came about, and I'm like, I get the best of both worlds. Yeah. So, Michael, of course, uh, kicking off your career here in Atlanta, yeah. now back as, you know, potentially you could be the head coach of this, of this new football team. What all have you been able to gather over the years, just with all of your experiences, to get yeah. you to this place now? I gained a ton of knowledge, and, and I was able to assemble a team that, of people that just you know, really wanted to put me in a positive light. Yeah. It takes a lot for people to believe in you and say, okay, this guy can be the guy. Yeah. Um, and I know obviously Atlanta helps me being here, but hey, that's part of it. That's my, I get love here. Yeah. And um, look, y'all my people. I, I appreciate y'all. I appreciated y'all from day one. Absolutely. And that love will never die. Right. So out of everything that you've been through, you know, NFL, reality television, which oh, was really good. It was all right. It was <laughs> Wasn't my idea, but right. it was all right. <laughs> what, <laughs> Played along. What have you I been able to? It. Right, you went along with it, and it, and it ended up okay. It ended up okay. Right. What have you been able to learn about the man that you are? Everything that you've been through. Yeah, I just, um, you know, I learned to have a lot of poise, um, even in situations where, you know, you things can get a little frantic, and you're yeah. like, man, you want to make a decision off impulse and somebody might say something and you want to get upset about it mm -hmm. and things aren't always perfect um you know i kind of learned to live with that spending two years alone by myself yes. and uh when i just learned that life wasn't that serious it, it is serious but some things you you can negate for the most part man you you you, you have to do you you yeah. know you have to pay attention to, to the things that really make sense and what really matters and keep family first and and Really, I know this may always sound cliche, but it's real. And I know you and a lot of people in this building can attest to this, but you have to keep God first somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. You know, even, you know, if you're not always thinking the right way or mm -hmm. thinking rational, you still somewhere deep down in here, you got to keep God first. And then, you know, it, it's recognizable. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you talked about family. How has uh, fatherhood centered you? And made it's you a the greatest person. thing yeah. ever. It's the greatest thing ever. I, I have to give. I have to give a ton of credit to the fatherhood um, because throughout this whole journey, you know, even when I was in Atlanta and playing, you know, I was young and just all over the place. Mm. Now, <laughs> you know, I got two daughters that yeah. I have to keep a watchful eye on. They're growing in the way social media is mm -hmm. now. I always want to stay connected to them somehow, some way, and, and always be an example for them. And I know I can't be an example always coming and going, but I I appreciate the fact that they, they understand that I have to do what I have to do sometimes, yes, but yes. being heavily involved, and my son is 16 now, raising him is is uh, something that, that's top priority. And then I have a nine-month-old yes. son. <laughs> who just rejuvenated me, but at the same time, it's not the easiest thing in the world. <laughs> right, 16 uh, to start all months, over. Right, yeah, right, so right, right. 
but uh, you know that right there, um, it, it keeps me motivated. Mm -hmm. You know, I know I have to always be the head of the household, and and I have to get out here and do what I have to do. Yeah, yeah. So are your daughters into sports? My daughter's my oldest daughter. She's thirteen. Her okay. name is Jada. She's uh, she's a quarterback. Uh, for a flag football Stop team, and she's playing. really, really good. Is she? Yes, she is. Yes, she I mean, is, is she? Is she uh, like a dad? Is she a she's dual like, threat? She a dual threat. Really? Like her dad. I mean, and from the time she was six, seven years old, man, you know, I was in the prime of my career yeah. with throw the ball, and she always she was standing at the top of the step, and I throw the ball to her. And man, I went back and watched some of her games last year, and she looked like me. Oh and my God! It's funny because. I was moving out of my house a couple of days ago, and I, I walked past two trophies that mm -hmm. I didn't recognize for about two months. And one of them said, Jada Vick, Student Athlete of the Year, mm -hmm. Jada Vick, Offensive MVP. Wow. And I, it was a proud moment for yeah. me as a dad because, you know, look, I always say this, man, girls got game too. Man, what? The girls got game too. Don't ever underestimate them. And uh, I have so much appreciation, you know, for for her and just for, for women in general yeah. who play sports. Man. Right, right. And, and not even in, in the sports world, just the way, you know, women think, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's different. It is. It's different and you have to be patient with them, but I developed that patience through them. Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. As Rashawn and Mike Vick's conversation continued, they chatted about Colin Kaepernick yes. and much more. Take a look. Right. You've seen, you've lived a lot of life in yeah. your 38 years. Yeah. Um, what do you have any regrets looking back? Yeah, at I do. Anything? You do. I mean, I, I have, I have regrets. I, I think there were th things that I could have done better. There were decisions that I could have made that um, could have helped me in certain situations. Mm -hmm. But I also feel like some of those decisions that I didn't make that were the correct decisions or the most mm -hmm. rational decisions are the ones that I can yeah. make now, mm -hmm. you know, with my eyes closed. Yes. You know, so yeah, I do regret certain things, but I'm afraid to say if I didn't if you do be, certain things right. that I wouldn't have changed and become the person that I've mm -hmm. become. And that, that's hard, you know, to think about sometimes. It's difficult. I'm thankful because, you know, those, uh, there were some dark times and mm -hmm. they, I was like broke down and hurt, you know, to a point where I hurt not only myself, but so many people around me. Yeah. You know, um, so, yeah, man, I, I wish I'd have made some better decisions, mm -hmm. but at least I can keep these kids now from, from making those bad decisions yeah, and yeah. try to help them, you know, think on the straight and narrow. Absolutely. Um, Colin Kaepernick obviously has been a martyr in this league um, yeah. and really has gone straight ahead and doing the things that he needs to do to talk about all the injustices that have been going on. Yeah. What are your thoughts on sports and activism i think i think it's a good thing i think um you 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 have to pick and choose the platforms yeah. to use it on and obviously you know we are are all walking brands mm -hmm. you know when you when you play professional sports and the visibility is there where, where it needs to be and i think it's a time where you can take advantage of it and it's a time where you can just kind of be proactive and, mm -hmm. and kind of lead people and and uh, still lean on those people who put you in a position to be on that level. Right. Um, I, I really feel like we all won't change. Mm -hmm. You know, we all hate that we have to deal with, you know, social injustice and things that, you know, are just not the norm. You know, but, you know, we all learn from that Colin Kaepernick experience. Mm -hmm. We all respect, you know, what he's done. We hate the fact that he's not playing football. Right. And we hate the fact that we, we, we look at it and say, man is he really not playing because of that mm -hmm. you know so i think for the guys who stepped up and spoke out and supported colin you know those guys are not letting that you know th the the theme die right you right. know what he stood for right you know we we still you know trying to take part in in, in helping with the movement mm -hmm. man and uh you know colin he'll be all right yeah. but he'll never be forgotten absolutely absolutely yeah. All right, we're going to wrap things up. We're both cancers. You're, you're due, yeah, no June 26th, doubt. I'm June 24th. And, yeah. you know, they say a lot about cancers. Yeah, yeah, um, Special people. They're very yeah. special people. Yeah. So I just want you to say yes or no to the things that I'm going to say because no these are some of the characteristics that I feel like, you know, maybe that I have. Okay, okay. so sensitive. Yes. Yes. Okay. Moody. 
Yes, even though I hate to admit it, yes. <laughs> I know your wife would agree. Loyal to a fault. Yes. Yes, okay. Straight up crazy. Yes. <laughs> dang, ding, ding, ding. I got crazy. it all right. You be crazy at times. <laughs> right, right, right. I love it. I love it, man. I'm really proud of you. The thank Alliance you. of American Football. It's going to be a big, big deal. Michael Vick, thank you so much. My man, thank my you. man, the one and only Michael Vick, everybody. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah.